improving the northern New Jersey commuter rail lines and even adding some new lines. It is a part of a two-part series focusing on just improving commuter rail and long-distance rail all around Manhattan and the New York metropolitan area in general. The first video focused more on building a second Hudson River Tunnel and connecting Grand Central to the Northeast Main Line to go Southwest. So if you haven't watched it to get some more background on this video, I would suggest clicking the link on your screen and that will take you right to that video. This video will be focusing more on the actual improvements of the Northern New Jersey lines. There are four new lines. One will go along the Hudson River, the West Hudson Line. The Pascack Valley Line will remain but it will be heavily upgraded. The Bergen County Line, also known as the Main Line, will also be heavily upgraded. And then the West Bergen, as I call it, or the Compton Lakes Line, it actually ends in Butler but it passes through that same area. That has tracks but it is not an operational line yet. Now last video I said that this link right here which will connect the Northeast High Speed Line to the rest of the Northeast Corridor would de amtrakify Penn Station. Now to use that extra space in Penn Station it would be a nice idea to bring commuter rail to an area that has not had it for a long time. It has very limited commuter rail service and none of it is direct to Manhattan. So with this connection here, a direct connection to Manhattan, these lines become more feasible. Before we start the two new lines, this one and this one, I'm going to focus more on the main line and the Pascap Valley line as these lines exist. However, to Im improve the infrastructure and ridership, I think high level platforms are a must at every single station. Every single station. I think the station should remain the same. I don't see any problem with how they're spaced out. They're a good distance away from other highways, so they seem popular, or at least will be popular after this upgrade. Most of this is one track for both lines. It's mostly just one track. I know, I think some of the main line is two tracks, especially north of Patterson and Hawthorne, but this is all one track. So I would say just random parts, don't make the entire line two tracks, but just whenever there's space, put a second track there, that'll increase capacity and make it much more people can ride it in a single time. Now, this video will more focus on the West Hudson Line and the West Bergen Line. Let's start off with the West Hudson Line. As I said last video, it will actually branch off the new Hudson River Tunnel a little east of where the other lines branch off. And it will fall, it will go right on this line right here. There are no stations until this station right here, Tonnell Avenue, because it connects with the Hudson Bergen Light Rail Line. I think this will be useful and there's a lot of density in here. I don't want the stations to be too close though as commuter rail is focused on bringing people from further away suburbs to the city, not just nearby suburbs. So, the, But there will be a station here in case people work here, it will be a nice link. Now this is all two tracks so none of it will really need a lot of upgrading. The next station will be at Ridgefield. After that it will continue, Palisades Park will be the third station, then Leonia, and keep in mind, all of these are pretty close to the town centers. None of them are in the town centers yet, but they will become in the town centers. Now, at the further north we go, these are some of New York's prime suburbs. Many nice school districts here, many nice medium incomes here. It would be cool if all these people who normally work in Manhattan can actually take this line rather than having to brave the George Washington Bridge, which is only a little portion of their entire commute. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention it. I think a speed of at least 90 miles per hour will work here. The stations are pretty far spaced apart until Ridgefield, so keeping a higher speed will definitely win support by commuters. 
after that that station is that is next is Englewood Englewood is a big like a bigger town there's a lot of downtown area lots of new condos apartments going up I think it will be a very good place for a transit oriented development as well as just the rich community of Englewood in general as I know many of these people do work in Manhattan the next station will be Tenafly if I pronounce that correctly then Treskill and it will also serve the residents of Alpine to come here it's only like a mile or so away yeah then Demerset then Gloucester North Wales and then it enters Rockland County, New York. All of this wasn't served by any commuter rail before and this is also direct. So this is no commuter rail to direct to Penn Station commuter rail. So it'll go to Sparkill, Blaubet, if I pronounce that wrong, please tell me. I don't think a stop at Orangeburg is that necessary, but like if you believe it is, please put it in the comments. West Nyack will be a big station right next to the mall, the Palisades Mall. So, yeah. Then Valley Cottage, Congers. Like, this is a single track line. Further south, I forgot to say. It becomes one track, I think, north of Englewood. But, like, various places, especially like stations, for example, will have two tracks. So it continues, it will go to Haverstraw and it will end at Stony Point, which is actually a good like 35 miles north of Manhattan, which is a, it serves a lot of communities that have not have had a lot of nice transportation in general directly to New York City especially from eastern Rockland County they had to either take the Tappan Zee Bridge and then take Route 87 South or take the Palisades Parkway to the George Washington Bridge and then go south on Route 9A. Now the Pascap Valley Line, Main Line, those are going to the stations are going to remain in the same locations lots of upgrades I already discussed that I'm not going to go too detailed in it other than this will end in Spring Valley, New York. This will end in Suffern, New Jersey. And like if you want to go into New York to Port Jervis, it will remain as is. I don't see a big reason to upgrade that line yet. Now the West Bergen line will actually pass through Secaucus. None of the other three lines do. So it will go through Secaucus, Lindhurst. This part of the line does exist. But if you get north of like Patterson Hawthorne, that's the new part. That's where it gets interesting. But still, this is a double track line. So all that really needs to be done is making high level platforms for the stations. So you have Delawana, yep, Delawana, then Vasaic. I, I don't know how to pronounce that. I should, but I don't. It's, Passaic is also like a bigger city. I believe it has like at least 70, 80,000 residents with like no other form of commuter rail. So this station will be important. Clifton, I think the station should be moved up here just because it's closer to like the main roads. So because Clifton doesn't really have much of a downtown. So it's, if a station is in a place where there's not much of a downtown, then just build it near a major road. Many people from the highway will gladly just quickly get off, get on the train and move on. After that, it will go to Patterson. Patterson will be another big station, I presume. Like it already has high level platforms. And right before Hawthorne, it will actually go this way. Hawthorne will be the only station that's really moved. It will be moved from on this line, which actually just connects with the existing main line, to right here in town center. Now this here, it will become one track, but like I said, certain sections where there's two, it will there will be two tracks. I don't want it two tracks everywhere. There may be some property disputes as well as money disputes. So yeah, 
continues midland park will be the next station now these this gets into some more high-end suburbs so these people i think a lot of people from here commute to manhattan every day so i think they like using this line um you have wickoff another big suburb franklin lakes one of the most expensive suburbs of all of new jersey will have its own station with this line then Oakland, Oakland is also a bigger suburb, not that wealthy, but still lots of people nearby, Route 287's nearby, and Pompton Lakes, and it'll end at Butler, which is actually in northern Morris County, that you didn't know that, unless if you actually live in this area. So that's it, these are the four lines. Generally, the maximum speed in a straight section should be at least 90 to 100 miles per hour, especially on the on this portion right here, 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 and here. Even there's the southernmost portions. As they're straight, no stations to block traffic. I don't see why they should go any slower than that. Many big suburbs here, and also wealthy suburbs being. Now, sir, in Manhattan, it will increase the property values and make Bergen County a more desirable place to live. It will almost be as good as Westchester. Previously, Westchester was like the suburb because like the only like high-end suburbs that were also connected to rail service were in Westchester County and are still are. Now, you have Bergen County to add to. You have lines going all the way to Butler, Suffern, Spring Valley, and Stony Point. Each of those is around 30 miles north of Manhattan. Now let's finish up. Should we electrify these lines? For now, I'm actually saying no. Electrification is actually pretty expensive. And third rail, you would think that would be easy, but then converting it to like catenary to enter Penn Station, it's going to be pretty hard and you'll need special trains to do that. Those trains are not cheap. So I was thinking, I think, and this is actually not used in America. It should be used a lot more right here. This is an example of a diesel multiple unit. You know how an EMU train, like a local train, each train coach has its own motor that pulls the train forward it's the same idea here but each train has it each coach rather has its own engine that pushes the train forward so it's much more efficient it'll make it'll just make turning around and just logistics much easier it'll be more attractive than standard diesel each diesel locomotives and I think this would be a good place to show off why they should be used in America, not just in northern New Jersey. Now, extension to the lines, not yet. Maybe I was thinking maybe an extension of this one to Newburgh, but the thing is uh, existing Hudson lines right there, so I don't see much of a use for that. Um, maybe a northern extension here, but that's also unlikely. A western extension from Butler, not right away, but there's actually only 10 miles of mountain before it enters Sussex County. If there's a lot of development in Sussex County, maybe, but yeah, I think this is a good solution to start. Northern New Jersey has been cut off. It's almost like a pa. Think of it. Like pa, you have like all like what's area served by it, and then you have a blank area, no commute, no direct commuter rail. This will fill in that last chunk of that pie and make all of the New York metropolitan area accessible by commuter rail. That's it. Thank you for watching. Bergen line will actually pass through the caucus none of the other three lines do so it'll go through the caucus Lindhurst this part of the line does exist but 
if you get north of like Patterson Hawthorne, that's a new part. That's where it gets interesting. But still, this is a double track line, so all that really needs to be done is making high level platforms for the stations. So you have Delawana, uh, yep, Delawana, then Passaic. I, I don't know how to pronounce that. I should, but I don't. It's, Passaic is also like a bigger city. I believe it has like at least 70, 80,000 residents with like no other form of commuter rail. So this station will be important. Clifton, I think the station should be moved up here just because it's closer to like the main roads so because clifton doesn't really have much of a downtown so it's, if a station is in a place where there's not much of a downtown then just build it near a major road many people on the highway will gladly just quickly get off get on the train and move on after that it will go to patterson patterson will be another big station I presume like it already has high level platforms and right before Hawthorne it will actually go this way Hawthorne will be the only station that's really moved it will be moved from on this line which actually just connects with the existing main line to right here in town center now this here it will become one track but like I said certain sections where there's two it'll there will be two tracks i don't want it two tracks everywhere there may be some property disputes as well as money disputes so yeah continues midland park will be the next station now these this gets into some more high-end suburbs so these people i think a lot of people from here commute to manhattan every day so i think they like using this line um you have wickoff Another big suburb, Franklin Lakes, one of the most expensive suburbs of all of New Jersey, will have its own station with this line. Then Oakland, Oakland is also a bigger suburb, not that wealthy, but still lots of people nearby. Route 287 is nearby. And Pompton Lakes, and it will end at Butler, which is actually in northern Morris County. That you didn't know that unless if you actually live in this area. So that's it. These are the four lines. Still, this is a double track line, so all that really needs to be done is making high level platforms for the stations. So you have Delawana, uh, yep, Delawana, then Passaic. I, I don't know how to pronounce that. I should, but I don't. It's, Passaic is also like a bigger city. I believe it has like at least 70, 80,000 residents with like no other form of commuter rail. So this station sh will be important. Clifton, I think the station should be moved up here just because it's closer to like the main roads. So because Clifton doesn't really have much of a downtown. So it's, if a station is in a place where there's not much of a downtown, then just build it near a major road. Many people on the highway will gladly just quickly get off, get on the train and move on. After that, it will go to Patterson. Patterson will be another big station, I presume. Like it already has high level platforms. And right before Hawthorne, it will actually go this way. Hawthorne will be the only station that's really moved. It will be moved from on this line, which actually just connects with the existing main line, to right here in town center. Now this here, it will become one track, but like I said, certain sections where there's two, it will, there will be two tracks. I don't want it two tracks everywhere. There may be some property disputes as well as money disputes. So, yeah continues midland park will be the next station now these this gets into some more high-end suburbs so these people i think a lot of people from here commute to manhattan every day so i think they like using this line um you have wickoff another big suburb franklin lakes one of the most expensive suburbs of all of new jersey will have its own station with this line 
then Oakland. Oakland is also a bigger suburb, not that wealthy, but still lots of people nearby. Route 287s nearby, and Bompton Lakes, and it will end at Butler, which is actually in northern Morris County. That you didn't know that unless if you actually live in this area. So that's it. These are the four lines. Generally, the maximum speed in a straight section should be at least 90 to 100 miles per hour, especially on the on this portion right here, 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 and here. Even there's the southernmost portions. As they're straight, no stations to block traffic. I don't see why they should go any slower than that. This line. Then. Oakland. Oakland is also a bigger suburb. Not that wealthy, but still lots of people nearby. Route 287s nearby. And Bompton Lakes. And it will end at Butler, which is actually in northern Morris County. You can not know that unless if you actually live in this area. So that's it. These are the four lines. Generally, the maximum speed in a straight section should be at least 90 to 100 miles per hour, especially on the on this portion right here, 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 and here. Even there's the southernmost portions. As they're straight, no stations to block traffic. I don't see why they should go any slower than that. Many big suburbs here, and also wealthy suburbs being now served by Manhattan, it will increase the property values and make Bergen County a more desirable place to live. It will almost be as good as Westchester. Previously Westchester was like the suburb because like the only like high-end suburbs that were also connected to rail service were in Westchester County and are still are. Now you have Bergen County to add to. You have lines going all the way to Butler, Suffern, Spring Valley, and Stony Point. Each of those is around 30 miles north of Manhattan. Now let's finish up. Should we electrify these lines? For now, I'm actually saying no. Electrification is actually pretty expensive. And third rail, you would think that would be easy, but then converting it to like catenary to enter Penn Station, it's going to be pretty hard and you need special trains to do that. Those trains are not cheap. So I was thinking, I think, and this is actually not used in America. It should be used a lot more right here. This is an example of a diesel multiple unit. You know how an EMU train, like a local train, each train coach has its own motor that pulls the train forward it's the same idea here but each train has it each coach rather has its own engine that pushes the train forward so it's much more efficient it'll make it'll just make turning around and just logistics much easier it'll be more attractive than standard diesel each diesel locomotives and I think this would be a good place to show off why they should be used in America, not just in northern New Jersey. Now, extension to the line, I think north of Englewood, but like various places, especially like stations, for example, will have two tracks. So it continues. It will go to Haverstraw and it will end at Stony Point which is actually a good like 35 miles north of Manhattan which is a it serves a lot of communities that have not have had a lot of nice transportation in general directly to New York City especially from eastern Rockland County they had to either take the Tappan Zee Bridge and then take route 87 south or take the Palisades Parkway to the George Washington Bridge and then go south on Route 9A. Now the Pascal Valley Line, Main Line, those are going to, the stations are going to remain in the same locations. Lots of upgrades, I already discussed that. I'm not going to go too detailed in it other than this will end in Spring Valley, New York. This will end in Suffern, New Jersey. 
unlike if you want to go into New York to Port Jarvis it will remain as is. I don't see a big reason to upgrade that line yet. Now the West Bergen line will actually pass through Secaucus, none of the other three lines do. So it will go through Secaucus, Lindhurst, this part of the line does exist but if you get north of like Patterson Hawthorne that's a new part, that's where it gets interesting. But still this is a double track line so all that really needs to be done is making high level platforms for the stations. So you have Delawana, uh, yep, Delawana, then Passaic, I, I don't know how to pronounce that, I should but I don't. It's, Passaic is also like a bigger city, I believe it has like at least 70-80,000 residents with like no other form of commuter rail, so this station will be important. Clifton, I think the station should be moved up here just because it's closer to like the main roads so because Clifton doesn't really have much of a downtown so it's, if a station is in a place where there's not much of a downtown then just build it near a major road many people on the highway will gladly just quickly get off get on the train and move on after that it will go to Patterson Patterson will be another big station I presume like it already has high level platforms and right before Hawthorne it will actually go this way Hawthorne will be the only station that's really moved it will be moved from on this line